Good day and welcome. My name is Drake598 and I am here today to give you a bit of a tips and tricks video on Space Hulk Deathwing. So tip number one would be in the options menu, go to your look sensitivity on the left hand side and increase that. You will find it much easier to move around and view the area as you're essentially wearing power armor. It can be slow to turn and move sometimes. Uh, so tip number two is just going to be a general quick overview of all the classes and some of the skills and perks of note. Um, some of them will cover all of the classes, some will be specially to that class. I have also done individual videos on all the classes, so if you are after something more in depth, feel free to have a look at those. So in the armor section of all the classes for multiplayer under customization, uh, one skill that I do recommend you pick up for every class is the armor bonus, 20%. It makes you a lot tougher. And the acid damage reduction by 50%. Uh, I pretty much have those equipped on all my classes, as the acid reduction is the bioblast strain, which are the ones that run up to you and explode in your face. And armor is pretty much used permanently where you're not going to get as much use out of the melee or the range. Otherwise, you can choose whatever skill reductions you like. Uh, same with weapons. Uh, one of the perks of note on the Heavy Weapon Specialist is War Machine, which increases your reload speed by t 2. So, you reload twice as fast. This also includes Plasma Weapons and your Spear of Caliban which can be very handy. Uh, a perk of note on the Assault Specialist is Ruthless, which allows you to sprint three times longer, or Zealot, which stops you from being parried by the small gene stealers. Only Broodlords and Cyphers can parry your blows with this equipped. Uh, the Apothecary doesn't really have anything of note, to be honest. Um, however, Resilience, every character has uh, this available, it will increase your, the HP of your body parts by 30%. That is individually your torso, your arms, your head, your legs. So that all sort of adds up and stacks and makes you a lot more tanky. Now every character can have that, so if you're unsure on what to get in the way of perks early on, that can be a good way to start. Uh, the Interrogator Chaplain in his perks, one perk that I'd like to highlight would be uh, Leader, uh, which extends Litany of War's effects by 5 seconds, which is his group invincibility, uh, making you and your entire squad invulnerable for, I believe it's 8 seconds at that point with that skill equipped. He also has Ruthless available. Uh, you can set them up however you like, but they're some of those perks that I would like to highlight in that area. Same with weapons, you can set them up however you like. Um, one thing of note would be, in some cases, you are a bit more excluded. Like the Librarian, uh, he has access to less weapons and skills than he does in the campaign. Also, to use the Force Axe or the Force Sword, which does give you a cooldown on your skills, the Force Axe gives you the most cooldown, and the Force Sword gives you the second most, which can be very handy. Uh, you are only allowed to wield the Storm Bolter or the Storm Bolter MK2 if you are using those. Uh, kind of similar with the Apothecary, that you can only use the Storm Bolter, the Hellfire, the Redemption, well, you, you can use all the firearms, but the Narceptium, which is not actually listed here, gives his skills a cooldown, so you always want to be using the Narceptium. Uh, it, you'll find it very handy. Uh, nobody else has an effect like that. Uh, so we'll move on now to game types. So tutorial, self-explanatory. Campaign, self-explanatory. Special missions will actually put you into a special mission area where you can earn XP for multiplayer and your customization, but it gives you AI allies to go through the mission with. 
Now, the objectives will be different from the campaign, although they will be on the same map. Next, moving into multiplayer. So you have your standard game mode, which when it loads up, Otherwise, if you were looking to earn the trophies on the PS4, you would want to turn Codex Rules off and then refresh. You have to do your matches on Codex Rules off to get the trophies on the PlayStation version and you have to get to max level in the mission. You do that just by turning Codex Rules off here. There are some benefits to using Codex Rules off uh, which I'll explain in a minute uh, Also friendly fire uh, Unless you're running a closed match with allies that you know and have a headset with I wouldn't recommend using this because you will get shot in the back quite a bit So this is the lobby for the normal game mode on multiplayer uh, You can activate and deactivate friendly fire here, but you cannot change codex rules on or off uh, if you hit the touchpad, you can change your game difficulty. Now, Disciple is the easiest. You will find it nearly impossible to die if you're fighting back. Chapter Champion is normal mode. You will find it very hard to die if you're fighting back. Lion Sword is hard mode. You will find it... that You will die in about three hits if you're unlucky. And No Mercy mode, if you're unlucky you will die in one hit. Now the special missions are available for all chapters apart from 8 and 9 and there is a special map that is not in any of the chapters that can only be accessed via special mission 10. Now it, even if you just play the same special mission, the objectives will change. They're randomised each time you load. The chapters will all be the same uh, as the campaign. So that's pretty much it on that. You change your class from here and when you get into game mode you can change your class as well as I will explain and show in a moment. So this is kind of the lobby in-game. Uh, you will have access to your classes from this little box here and be able to change. You will only be able to do so occasionally when that portal opens up. And you will only be able to enter the portal once. So that is one good thing to remember. So this seems like a good time. Most enemies can be defeated by circling them. I know that is going to sound a little weird, but take this Cypher for instance. Alright, I will have to heal there. Once you get him in a good spot, you are able to circle. Obviously it helps if you have friends here because they can focus fire on it at the same time and watch your back. So long as you get the timing right, you can dodge their blows and just keep them circling. It works for most enemies, uh, apart from Broodlords and Psychers. I never recommend trying to do this to those two enemies. Psychers probably being the most deadly, Broodlords being the second most, uh, just by virtue of their size and where they can get to. So this is going to take a little bit uh, with the class I'm using, but... Like, if you had one assault here, he would defeat this Scyther in the matter of a couple of seconds. So th that's a bit of just knowing what classes to use where. But as you can see, that Cypher is now down, and it's just the rest of these guys. And even there, I wasn't taking that much damage from the rest of them.
these are relics. If you listen closely, you'll hear a whisper. It gets louder as you get closer. The rel relics are in the same locations uh, through all chapters and special missions. Uh, they do not change in the campaign, however, there are a couple of extra relics to collect. So you are able to come in, close a door, lock it, and face the other way, and still shoot and do other actions while locking doors as well. So this is the lobby for the in-game mode for No Codex Rules Off. Now, one thing to note about no codex rules is you'll no longer need to use that to change class. You'll be able to use touchpad and swap to any class at will. Now, you can even do that out here in the real world. So you can do that at any point. However, one thing to note is that it will put your skills on a cooldown. See how it is now at 90? So I'll push that again, and I will just push straight away. And it's all the way back up. Now, I will do that again, and if you look on the right-hand side, my stamina gauge, gauge is going down. It is now depleted. So I'm just going to go through here. Fire a couple of shots as protection. To hit the touchpad. And the stamina bar is all the way back up. So we'll do that again. One, two. Sometimes you might take some hits doing that, but depends on how quick you are with your reaction. It can be quite useful for swapping between class for say, using long range to using short range. So it does give you versatility in your weapons, but you will be playing without any skills. Now one thing I would like to talk about is dodging over blocking. Now blocking is all well and good, however it will be dealing damage to your arm, and you will also find that Blocking does not cover a lot of your body. The main part of your body that it actually protects is your head, regardless of what class you're taking. The shield protects the body slightly more, but essentially it is no more than, say, the assault class, or sorry, the heavy weapon specialist. Its main job is to protect you from being critically damaged in the face or the head. Now, I am more one of the people that likes to actually go for dodges than actual blocks. You will find it quite easy to back away and let them strike first and dodge most of the attacks. Alternatively, you can sidestep entirely and attack that way. So... This seems like a good time to talk about spreading damage across your body. You actually have five body parts, a left arm, a right arm, legs, torso and head. They can all be damaged individually and separately. Now, blue indicates full HP or pretty close to full HP. Yellow indicates mildly damaged. Orange indicates heavily damaged. Red indicates almost gone, and flashing red means critically damaged and about to be destroyed. Black can happen to either your arms or your legs. If that happens, they are destroyed, but you can carry on. Um, you will just lose access to that weapon if it is an arm, or you will only be able to walk if it is your legs. Now, a lot of gunfire you can block as well. That is something to remember. Same with missiles. One important thing to note as well 
it is what class to use in what situation. Now, the Heavy Weapon Specialist is going to be useful for pretty much all games due to his blast radius and versatility. The Chaplain is going to be useful, useful in everything except single player as he can resurrect the entire party and has invulnerability for the party and individually himself. Uh, the Apothecary is going to be very important to heal and keep the squad members alive. Uh, the Librarian has access to some pretty unique skills and some heavily damaging skills. The Assault Specialist you're going to pretty much want whenever you're facing a Broodlord or Cypher as they will be able to destroy them in a couple of hits. Uh, the Tactical Specialist can be useful just as a Generalist as well but that can also be handy in something like no codex where if you need to swap from a class to say I just got damaged so I just swap to the librarian oh sorry not the librarian the chaplain uh, again sorry the apothecary and now I could heal myself so long as I survive the 30 seconds until the skill is up. Another tip is to use the terrain to your advantage. Take this turret for instance. I am not taking any damage by virtue of my positioning and what is in front of me. Taking Use, making use 